Hello, welcome to another damp video. Uh, it's a day for nothing else, but as the thumbnail says, we're getting stuck into the 165. This is a job I have been uh, trying to get started for the last year. Uh, I pulled the head off the tractor about a year ago, pulled the sump out maybe eight months ago, and we haven't got near it since. So today we're gonna make a start uh, to rebuild uh, the engine. When I say we, I probably mean my father. I'll be along just to do a bit of the donkey work and help out, but he's the expert. He's rebuilt car engines, boat engines, tractor engines, digger engines. He's been at it all his life. So he knows what he's up to. We will uh, ask him uh, at various points along just to kind of give us a bit of a steer on what he's up to rather than just video the whole thing I'll just pick up the key points uh, and let you see that so uh, it's a small little video for possibly part one of the 165 uh, engine rebuild so I hope you enjoy the video before we get stuck into that I just want to say thank you to everyone who liked, subscribed and commented on uh, last week's videos and indeed watched them. Thank you so much. I always say it, I do love to hear from people while you're just saying hello or uh, you have uh, advice or comments or whatever. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos and a subscription. Uh, it's free if you can do that. Greatly appreciate it. Helps move the channel along. So that's it. and. Uh, Let's get layered into the 165 and we'll pick it up with my father uh, reaming out the, uh, or boring out, whatever you want to call it, the cylinders on the tractor. Right, so what are we at? Uh, we're going to uh, put new rings on the pistons. Uh, so if we're putting new rings in, we have to hone the bores out to leave them rough so as the piston rings bed into the liners again. Right, so you couldn't put new piston rings in and not do this no. honing out process? No, it's a waste of time. Ah, the, right. the oil would just come up by and you'd be lost in compression. And right, okay. Well then, have you them all done? No, I haven't. Only have that one done. Ah, right, okay. So. Round it. What are you putting in? Heating oil? Yes, you've got heating oil. Heating oil or uh, paraffin oil, that makes it cut better. Before you do any of that, you turn your crankshaft so that it's horizontal, so if you don't hit it with this bone. Wait, what if you hit the... What, what the well, you could break the end of the wee uh, stones. Oh, on the end of the crankshaft? On, on the top of the crankshaft. Now, compared to this one, if you look in there, you see what that one's like, and then look in there and see what this one's like. Oh, much, much cleaner, much... Much cleaner, and, and it leaves it as... It's smooth enough, but rough enough for the rings to bed back in again. The, the whole four of them has to be like that before right. we continue on with the rest of it. Right. Mm 
wee bit of wear on them there. You can find it a wee lip there, but... So the only way to cure that wee lip is to replace all the liners? All the liners, and you don't put new liners in without putting new pistons in along with it. So that would be new liners, pistons, pistons, all adding to the cost? All adding to the cost. But we let these stay in because we thought the I wear know, is... The wear isn't too bad. Right. Uh, there's maybe a thigh. Might be maybe a... One and a half. A thigh for anybody who's Aye. millimetre minded is uh, thousands of an inch. Is that right? Aye. Okay. You'd, I would need to look at the field gauge to see what it measures up to. And, and it'd be points, something of a millimetre. Point. But those liners are staying in because that's, they're all right. So there's no, not enough wear in those to, what you would say would negate to bring them, take them out and put new liners in. Uh, well, if it was a working tractor and been used every day, you probably would have put a set of pistons and liners in it. Aye, but because but it's, it's a toy, a really. Tractor, uh. It's uh, It does do a bit of work, but not an awful lot. Yes. Right, so we have finished. What did you call oh, it? Hone, hone and Honing out the, the, bores. the bores. That's done now. No need to touch them anymore. What are we doing now? Okay, uh, have to clean the pistons and then take the rings off and put new rings on. Clean the pistons and put new rings in the pistons. That's the next yes, job. That's the next job. Right, let's get layered under that then. I just leaves it that when I put the rings on and then I have to put a, a ring clump onto that that it slides. I put oil around this here and then slide the whole lot into the liner. Right. That just makes it be easier to uh, put back and kill the engine again. That's on again, it's going to be. Just gently ease it past yeah, the others. Aye. That's all you can do. Is that spring going behind it? That spring goes in behind it. There you go. That's one done. Three. Wide? Is that supposed to be like that? Oh, I, once you crump that in, you, know, you, you crump that in with your... And what is that? Because each of those, what's that called? That that's one? the oil ring. That's the oil ring? Mm -hmm. Right. That stops the oil coming Crump. up? Yes. Right, got you. See, there's a difference in that one, can't hold up. See, the, there's an edge on it. Right. And the reason for that is, you see the, the wee lip that's in the top of the bore? Yes. That so it doesn't come up and hit that lip and then break. Uh, so right. it's, there's a wee bevel on it there. So that goes to the top. There.
see the gaps in your rings. Ah, uh, so they're not all in the same place? They're not all in the same place. Otherwise you'd lose compression. Yes, the, the compression would come down, straight down through, whereas it has to go down and across, back and forward. You see, you divide it into four, put them in four different... Right, well, that is one piston done. Now I have another three to do, and then we'll pick the video up once we have those done to the next stage. We have all the, the uh, pistons all cleaned, and now we'll uh, put them in one by one. Starting at the front or the back? Uh, the front, uh... front in first. Right, okay. Is there a, a right way and a wrong way to put those in? Yep, that wee neck. See wee neck there. Because then um, you just push it down there. That's it in. That's it in. And then lots and lots of oil. Slurry everything with oil. Great. We just uh, tap it down now. Tap it down now with the. That's it. One number piston in. One number one piston in. That's right. See, if you don't get that up tight, the rings will be spread that wee bit, and then they catch the side of the... Oh, so it's important to ratchet that up tight as you can. Twist it. Straighten on the bottom side. It's caught in something. If you, if you go down and twist it, I can push it down in. Here is the sump. Here is the sump, I said. So what we need to do is take all this off and then all the old gasket off. Ah, there's a tool for the job. Take all that off and then I suppose I better give that a clean out or something with a bit of, bit of petrol. There's, oh, there's uh, petrol in there. Oh, the on the farm. Right. Right. There's got to be an easier way of doing this. Right, I am underneath the engine, great place to be, but 
as you can see, what I'm trying to do is clean all these surfaces all the way around so that the gasket will uh, make a good seal. So I just need to uh, buff down, just need now to get a rag and uh, wipe it clean. And that should be good enough to uh, put the, uh, the gasket on, uh, I hope. Well, we'll see what the boss man says, but looks good to me anyway. That's my way a wee bit. It is your way a bit. There. Right, yeah. That'll do. Try that. Center all that back. There. Yeah. That's pretty much tight in my side. Oh, is it right? Oh, stick uh, just to give you a little bit of a background on the uh, 165 and why are you even rebuilding the engine? About a year ago, actually, might be two, come to think of it. It's two summers ago, that's it, yeah, two summers ago. It's a year and a half ago. Uh, going along the road in the 165 and there was a burst of water came out of the uh, Come out of the engine and the engine had uh, heated up now we Thought that the head gasket had gone checked for the head gasket couldn't see a, bro uh, a damaged uh, uh, Broken head gasket And ended up anyway uh, That the radiator had blocked so you could put it down to poor maintenance on my behalf. Anyway, we decided to strip down the engine because a one or two of the injectors, I think, were uh, uh, leaking or weren't working properly. So took the head off to work at those, to have a look in, put a new head gasket on. And then when we, were, when we had that done and we sent it away to get skimmed, the guy who skimmed the head said, you know what, you'd be better off putting new uh, piston rings on that tractor and uh, hence why then we decided to take out the pistons and put new piston rings in. So yeah, all stemmed from I guess a poor lack of maintenance on my part because I didn't clean out the radiator, overheated and uh, blew the water out and there you go, that's the uh, costly result of just not paying attention to, uh, to the tractor. But I can't believe that it that had blocked because this tractor never really does anything. It turns hay the odd time and turtles around the farm. It's, nowadays it's kind of too small for the, the big jobs or the main jobs. But anyway, there you go. So that would teach you a lesson on maintenance and certainly a, a lesson hard learned by me. Um, and the, the funny thing is, I don't know if I mentioned this in the video, but we have another tractor which is uh, a little T20 where the engine blew up 30 years ago, something like that. The engine went on this, it didn't blow up, but it, it overheated and we had to stop. And then the 3075, which is, you know, well documented on this channel about the, uh, the engine with that. But all three tractors, T20, 165, 3075, all three engines failed at exactly the same point on the road to the art farm. 
very strange coincidence. Years apart, 30 years, two years ago, and 3075 was this year. But exactly the same point, you could put a stick in the ground and the three tractors failed in exactly the same point. Now, uh, these tractors were going in the opposite direction to 3075, but it's the same point in the road. So uh, I don't know how weird that is. That is an extreme coincidence, but it's weird. But anyway, there you go. So uh, nowadays I drive a different route. Don't drive there anymore. Um, too costly. There you go. Back at this. Um, yeah, that's it. I can't even get at them because the timber's in the way or something. Washer on it or not? What? I'm not sure if the washer's on or not. Oh, well, it is. Okay. We didn't put a new sump on in that. Did we get you in for it? I don't, I don't know. I think we did. The clockers, we should have took that out when we had the thing off. What? That's something. But it'll come out. Sure, I had to clean the oil in it. I took it off with the oil in it. No. Because I couldn't get that out. No. What would you do with that? We have something on from it? Or? Hi, right, folks, that is the end of the video for today on the 165. So, good bit of progress there. Got the pistons in and got the sump back on again. So, that's the bottom half of the engine rebuilt, so to speak. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get stuck into the top half. So, we will uh, get the injectors put back into the head and get the head back on the tractor Hopefully uh, So that's it and uh, hope you liked the video. Please like subscribe comment and uh, Thanks for watching See you in the next video. Bye. Bye